what's up? We got Pedro Pramo by Juan Rufo next. That's some uh, pretty crazy art. I feel like this has a good representation of the atmosphere. I heard about this book from Better Than Food Book Reviews, my favorite book review channel. And he has been probably since he kind of introduced me to the whole community four or five years ago. I heard about this from him like a while ago. Um, and I'd been on the lookout for it the whole time while I was traveling the West Coast. And how I was having a really hard time finding it. I only found it once, like brand new, and I didn't want to pay full price because it's only like 125 pages and it was like 16 or 17 bucks. And I was like, no, nah, I'm not doing that. And so it wasn't until I was in uh, Pocatello, Idaho, which was actually my favorite place I traveled to where Idaho State is. I wasn't even planning on going there. I was on my way to Salt Lake City from Idaho Falls and was driving by and it was just too beautiful to pass up. So I pulled over and spent like a whole day in the town and went to this awesome bookstore, which I don't re remember the name of, but it's pretty much the main bookstore there in the town. And um, one of the coolest bookstores I've been to, it was like how bookstores should feel. Um, it was just kind of like chaos but the way it was set up and the room was so big and like the walls were just lined up with uh, lamps without any uh, lamp shades and so and then there was just huge big plants around it was it was awesome but I ended up talking to the owner there for a while because um, I went in like right when he opened I was the first person there um, but yeah and so he had a lot of really good selections and I I went there and he had three copies of this. And I was like, I haven't been able to find this used this whole time. Cause I, I've been specifically looking for it. Like everywhere I went, I would look for this book cause I was determined to find it used. And so I was just blown away that he had three copies and he was like that with a lot of stuff, but I didn't have too much money to spend that day. And I had got this and Shelby Foote's Civil War Trilogy. I'm not sure what, I think it's just called Civil War, but, but yeah, I bought that, which was like 10 bucks and then got this. I didn't want to spend any more money, so I kind of made myself not look anymore. Awesome little shop if you're ever in Pocatello. I'm not even sure if that's how you pronounce it, but I think so. Definitely check it out. But yeah, I gave this a uh, four out of five, um, mainly just because I had to like push myself through it at certain points. I don't know why. I feel like there was a lot of characters and so but once I was through with it it just made me want to like reread it because now that I had a bearing of like what was going on and the ending was a little bit more it had a satisfying ending but it didn't have a satisfying conclusion if that makes sense I highly suggest it I've been really into like the like surrealism and magical realism and like absurdism and stuff that kind of just like feels psychedelic to me um i just you don't really know what's going on a lot of like purposeful confusion um i've been kind of leaning into that because all my life growing up i hated not knowing what was going on in books and it just kind of like made me feel stupid so i would like throw them down but once i realized you know books purposefully you know make you confused sometimes especially like in these types of genres um, I've been leaning more into it, and this is definitely one of those books. Let me uh, read about Juan Rufo real quick, because this is pretty much, I'm pretty sure this is his only book, but it's considered a, a classic in Mexican literature, and he influenced a lot of people. But he was born in 1918 and passed in 1986. He was born in Ceula, in the state of Jalisco, Mexico. His collection of short stories, The Burning Plain, was published in 1953, and then Pedro Bramo established him as a major literary figure in Latin America. The rest tells you about the person that wrote the foreword, which I probably need to read. It's only like a couple of pages long. It's not a good idea to read the forewords or the introductions before you actually know the book, because they have a lot of spoilers in them. Um, and nothing makes me more mad than spoilers, especially in books. I like the surprise. 
but so it begins with his mother dying and her last wish is for him to go find his father Pedro Paramo uh, in the town called Kamala that's how like the first page starts and so then it jumps to him you know going to Kamala and uh, finding his way there and he finds a guy that's like carrying a cart on his way there and catches a ride with him and but yeah it's pretty much just a ghost town there's only like one lady there still living there and once he meets up with her it starts kind of jumping into different storylines of this town this ghost town became a ghost town and how the town itself died and so I th honestly the main character is pretty much the town Kamala which I think you they only mention the protagonist's name like twice I think but like halfway through the book he's kind of forgotten you're just consumed by all these other stories so there's no chapters every page or two there's like a break like a spaced break like that and kind of takes and each one's like sometimes they're in the same perspective sometimes they're in a different perspective sometimes you don't really know who they're talking about for a while until like that little section ends and you're just like so you're kind of slowly piecing it together so each paragraph or each section you kind of have to start figuring out who he's talking about or if it's a new character and i should have i started doing it at the end like at the back but i should have done a better job at keeping track of the the family tree and like the characters and i took my time reading this because each section or two after like a section or two I needed to process what what was happening, you know, every five or ten pages and really sit with it. Um, so it took me a little while to read it. It's only 124 pages, but I don't know. It's not one that I would suggest just reading in one sitting, but I don't really like reading any book in one sitting. As the story progresses, you're like more and more characters come together and you're starting to piece together what, what happened, you know. Pedro Paramo is pretty much the main farmer that produces all the food for the town. He has many children. He kind of slept with whatever woman he wanted to. and um, His town was his creation. There's outside um, forces like gangs and outlaws that are... It's kind of also political. Another one of the main characters is like Father... I don't know how to say his name. Retentia? Or Retentia? Retentia? Terrier? I don't know. Sorry, I'm bad with pronouncing other languages, but and he's kind of a main character and so you kind of see the religious aspect because he's like the main pastor, but he also needs to make money uh, to live and so you see that conflict and, and he pardons people that shouldn't be pardoned to go to heaven because of money reasons and all this sort of stuff. So it's a lot of like moral conflict and uh, you know, inner conflict and uh, outside, you know, forces and, and then you got the whole spiritual side of it as well. So there's just a lot going on in this little book and it's definitely one that I will probably reread now that I have more of an idea of how it goes and what's going to happen um, and the types of characters that are in it. My biggest complaint was the protagonist that the story starts with doesn't really end with him. Sorry if this is a spoiler, I just said I hated spoilers, but that was my main complaint. His storyline is kind of just dropped halfway through the book. And I kind of wanted it to come back to have more of like a bow tie effect at the end, but that doesn't really happen. And you know, there might be, you know, metaphorical or symbolic reasons for that, that I missed or could, you know, create if I wanted to. A lot of it just becomes subjective, but overall, great story definitely one to check out during the eerie season um i think like halloween was kind of the perfect time for that because it was still not cold because since it's in mexico you know kind of has day of the dead vibes it was a nice uh, time to read that your best bet is you know buying it online but but yeah definitely check it out and yeah thanks for sticking with me peace